Hello class or classes, depending on who's watching this. I'm going to go through some pictures of the cat arteries and I'm, I tried my best to find some good pictures of all the cat arteries that you might have been given on a particular picture that your professor gave you. Um, I did find a website that is pretty good about showing the cat vessels by region, though some uh, were very up close and difficult to orient yourself as to what, what was superior, inferior, medial, or lateral. So some of the pictures shown at this website are better than others. Um, <clears throat> I am going to be using this, um, this picture as my guide, I'm going to first do arteries above the diaphragm. And some things to note here, off of the aortic arch, there are two branches that come off. And we're gonna see the brachiocephalic artery and the left subclavian artery. Eventually, I will show you um, a picture where we can see the right and left internal mammary or um, internal thoracic arteries. So that's going to be towards the end of my above the diaphragm, superior the diaphragm discussion. Was not able to find impressive pictures of cat vertebral arteries. So, I mean, if your professor finds one, fine, but for my class, I, I couldn't find one. So don't expect me to tag something on a cat dissection for the vertebral arteries. Coming off the brachiocephalic trunk, the cat vessels then um, bifurcate into the left common carotid and right common carotid. Again, um, for humans, we have three branches coming off the aortic arch, and for cats, they have two. They have the brachiocephalic, which will branch into the left common carotid, right common carotid, and then uh, right subclavian. The left subclavian is over here by itself. Um, I was not able to really find very good transverse scapular artery pictures either, um, but that is a branch that comes off first. And then after that, it turns into um, the, after we have the transverse scapular come off, um, it turns into the axillary. And when you see the subscapular artery come off, it turns into the brachial artery. So again, it's axillary, then subscapular comes off, and then brachial. Up here, the common carotid is going to bifurcate into the tiny internal carotid, very small. It says on this picture, don't worry about it, but I found pictures that have it, so yes, you do have to worry about it. <clears throat> you will see in some of the pictures an artery that comes off this way to go to the, the larynx and thyroid, and those are not on your hit list, but I just want you to be aware. You will see something going this way to the throat region, and I don't want you to confuse that with these this external carotid. Here's the left, and that branches to the lingual artery, which is going underneath the cat's tongue. And then you'll also see a branch that seems to be traveling along the cat's lateral portion of its cheek. Um, but medial to its ear, and that's the maxillary artery. So let's try and get through some of these, and um, I know it's challenging to learn all this online, but it's better than nothing. So first, right down here, we have our aortic arch, okay? And then we have our left subclavian artery. Here is our brachiocephalic artery. Again, this is unique presentation to the cat, two branches off the aortic arch. Down here is, of course, the heart. <clears throat> then the brachiocephalic branches into the left and right common carotid arteries. And then this branch here is the right subclavian artery. On this picture, it's mostly showing you veins, but I wanted to um, show you the left common carotid artery here, and over here would be the right common carotid artery. You can see up here some arteries going into the larynx and throat region, 
<clears throat> and those are not on your hit list, but again, I, I said I wanted to warn you about seeing that. Now here's a side profile <clears throat> of the cat vessels. We can see the left common carotid artery here and the right common carotid artery right there. <clears throat> and it comes up here and here's that branch to the throat region that I said I don't want you to worry about because this is going to the larynx and thyroid region. So instead, common carotid keeps coming up here and then we see this tiny little branch for the left internal carotid artery. Remember on our picture it said, the internal carotid artery is very small, don't worry about it. Well, that's how small it is, and yes, you need to worry about it. Then we see this branch right here is the left external carotid artery. <clears throat> so again, internal carotid, left external carotid, and then you can see it branching to the lingual artery and then the, here's a little piece that's coming up just it didn't they didn't dissect it all the way but that would be the maxillary artery here again is a uh, an example of the right common carotid left common carotid on this side and we can see it starting to branch into the right external carotid artery there um, let's see, now this is a, a pretty good picture and um, I hope you can expand it to see, but um, here is our left common carotid artery and right common carotid artery again. This is that, that larynx vessel I said don't worry about. This tiny little vessel coming out here um, is the left internal carotid artery and this branch coming up here is the left external carotid artery and if we kept following it up superiorly we would see it branch again into the lingual and maxillary artery. Down here again we see our aortic arch, our left subclavian artery and brachiocephalic trunk. It bifurcates into the left common carotid and here we see the right common carotid, and then here is the right subclavian. It turns into the axillary artery once we get off the transverse scapular artery, artery. You can see that here. And then it turns into the brachial artery once we have the, the subscapular artery, which is not labeled here and is not really well seen but somewhere in here we would see the subscapular artery. Over here we see the left axillary artery and let's keep going. So here is a good picture. Here is the aortic arch basically and these two vessels that are coming off those are the internal mammary or internal thoracic arteries. They come off of the subclavian arteries. So it's hard to see, but this would be part of the left subclavian and going this way would be the right subclavian. So again, this is the left and right internal thoracic artery. <clears throat> now to orient you, here is the cat's laryngeal prominence. So that's, um, this is their larynx and down here we see the trachea with the tracheal C-rings. So follow this up here and we have the left common carotid artery. Uh, number eight is uh, leading to the thyroid and I, I addressed that we would see some branches coming off the common carotid that are going to the throat region and that you did not need to worry about that. So I'm going to keep going superiorly and as we move superiorly, look how tiny this internal carotid artery is. Then this part here is the external, left external carotid artery. And number six is showing you a very good lingual artery. And number five is coming up here and is showing you the external, or we just call it maxillary artery. So here's the maxillary artery. 
Another perspective, here is the aortic arch, and now as it moves inferiorly, we expect you to say the descending thoracic artery. So that's how specific you need to be. Here are the two branches coming off the aortic arch. We have the left subclavian artery and the brachiocephalic trunk. Um, the word trunk is a word to describe if vessels will be coming off of it that share common names. So if your teacher says calling it brachiocephalic artery is fine, which it should be, then you don't need to worry about trunk versus artery. But um, here is the, um, the uh, left common carotid and right common carotid. Um, so sorry. Um, Trunk, um, again, usually refers to a large uh, vessel that will branch many times, and sometimes those branches share common names like the left and right common carotid artery shown here. What you can't see would be the right subclavian branching off of that as well. It seems to be covered by the superior vena cava here. These vessels back here, um, this is in your in the cat picture that I showed you. Those are the posterior intercostal arteries. So that is on your cat picture and is fair game. Again, descending thoracic aorta. Some of you, your teacher might say thoracic aorta is just fine. But if you look at the picture in parentheses, it does say descending thoracic aorta. <laughs> And again, we see the left common carotid artery and the right common carotid artery. Here we see the internal and external carotid arteries branching off. This branch going towards the throat region is one that is not on your hit list. We see the brachiocephalic artery branching to the left and right common carotid and also the right subclavian. This branch coming up here is the transverse scapular. And once we had the transverse scapular come off, this branch here would now become the axillary. And then as the subscapular artery comes off, so down here, this is all subscapularis. <coughs> so Right here, it looks like this to me is the transverse scapular artery on the left side. And this would be then the axillary. And then this one looks like it could be the subscapular artery because it's going to this muscle. And then this one is the brachial artery. And I'm saying could be, I'm just going to say, yep, that's what it is. I would like to get a better up close picture of this. So for testing purposes, we're going to go with that. Here's your aortic arch again, and here is your left subclavian artery coming up. Um, a more up-close picture, the aortic arch is what this blued out picture is pointing to. We see the left subclavian artery, and interestingly cut off here, because um, we cut off the chest plate, is the left internal thoracic artery. Here's your brachiocephalic trunk um, or artery, and it turns into the left and right common carotid. Then this turns into the right subclavian artery. And again, we can see the little internal thoracic artery that has been cut off because we take off the um, the um, chest plate. I'm going to try and change color. Maybe you can see this again. So again, aortic arch, left subclavian, internal thoracic, brachiocephalic artery, left and right common carotid, right subclavian artery, right internal thoracic artery, and it looks like this would be the transverse scapular coming off here. So again, here is the left transverse scapular, which then makes this turn into the axillary artery. Now we can see a nice view of the subscapularis muscle. We can see the subscapular artery coming off. 
So all of this is the right subscapular artery. And then that means this part continuing on into the arm would be the brachial, right brachial artery. Okay, so transverse scapular, this would be the left axillary artery then. Here is the left subscapular artery, and then this would be the brachial, the brachial, left brachial artery continuing into the cat's arm that we can see over here. Now I'm going to move into the um, vessels that are inferior of the diaphragm. So here's our diaphragm up here. We have the abdominal aorta. We're going to see the first major branch off of the abdominal aorta, according to your hit list, is the celiac trunk. Again, large vessel that's going to branch to many other vessels. In this case, they're not going to share names. We're going to see a hepatic, a gastric, and a splenic artery. Pre please understand this picture is two-dimensional, and when I show you the, the cat pictures, they were taken from a three-dimensional perspective. So how these three vessels splay out is, is going to be a lot like if you were to make the number three using your fingers. You would, you would articulate your thumb and your digit number five, and then digits two, three, and four would be held up in the air. And that should give you a perspective that one of those fingers is going to be going to the gas, going to the stomach, gastric. Um, one's going to be going to the hepatic, and one's going to the spleen. Um, <clears throat> so depending on how the person moved the viscera over to get a good picture of these vessels, they might you, you could appreciate how they might um, cross over each other. The next major vessel is the superior mesenteric artery. Then we're going to see the right and left suprarenal arteries. They can be small, but I have seen some cats where they're pretty, um, they're pretty big. Then the left and right renal artery are next. Very small gonadal arteries, and if they are going to the testes, you're going to see them loop all the way around and go through the peritoneum like this. So you're going to say, well, they don't look like they're going to gonads. Well, they're going to loop around and come out through the inguinal canal down here to the cat's gonads if it's male. So they're very tiny. Then we're going to see the inferior mesenteric artery, and in a lot of cases, even in class, um, when students are trying to move the intestines around, they rip off this tiny little artery. But don't worry, I found some good pictures of it. And then we have the right and left iliolumbar. Now, I, I appreciate that I'm talking about arteries, and yet I'm using a blue highlighter, but that is just so it's easier to see on some of these pictures. <clears throat> We're going to see the um, abdominal aorta bifurcates into an external, a right external, and a left uh, external iliac artery. Strange presentation compared to human, but there's going to be one little branch called the internal iliac artery, and then it branches again into the right and um, left, this should say left, internal iliac artery, and then in the middle, hanging down, is the median sacral artery. Don't confuse that with the mid-sacral vein that you might have seen in another video. I was not able to find any good examples of deep femoral arteries on these cat pictures. Um, <clears throat> but once the inter oh, sorry, once the external iliac arteries cross the inguinal canal, they turn it into the femoral. So this is the left femoral artery. This is the right femoral artery at this point. And then we're going to see the saphenous artery traveling with the great saphenous vein. It's very superficial, and a branch of the femoral is going to dive deep into the cat's knee, and that turns into the popliteal arteries. Again, over here, left, and over here is right. For your exam, you will be required to tell us if it is left or right, and if it's an artery or vein. You can use L or R for left or right, respectively, and A or B for artery or vein, respectively.
So here we are, <clears throat> this is the abdominal aorta, and we're at the, the most inferior portion of it. Here is the tiny little inferior mesenteric artery. Here is the right and the left iliolumbar artery. Students sometimes say the answer to this inferior mesenteric artery because of the way the viscera are pulled to the right. You can see the intestines over here. They'll say right inferior mesenteric artery. That, that's incorrect. I will mark you wrong. It is not a paired vessel. There is no such thing as a right inferior mesenteric artery, so do not put that. Then we see it branches the aorta, the abdominal aorta, to the right and left external iliac arteries. Then we see one little single internal iliac artery, which again will branch into the right and then the left internal iliac arteries. And it's difficult to see, but right down here, this little nub right there, is the median sacral artery. And here's our abdominal aorta again. This is a more um, distant type shot. Here is the right external iliac and the left. And then inside we see that little arrowhead kind of presentation with the internal iliac leading into the right internal iliac and the left internal iliac. Again, right about here is the inguinal canal. So the external iliac turns into the left femoral artery shown here and the right femoral artery shown here. Eventually we would see that branch again into the um, saphenous artery. It would be traveling right here with the great saphenous vein, but because this picture is taken from afar, we can't really see the artery, but it, it's there. I see little bits and pieces of it sticking out from the great saphenous vein. I, I believe I have another picture of that coming up. So uh, here's our abdominal aorta again. And here, as I warned, is the little nub of the in, uh, inferior mesenteric artery that has been broken off. Here is the right iliolumbar artery and the left iliolumbar artery. We can see the right external iliac and the left external iliac. We are looking straight on, so we're not really seeing the branching in the pelvic bowl of the internal iliacs in this picture. But we are seeing the right gonadal artery and the left gonadal artery. And this is actually a picture of a female cat. And that's why the gonadal arteries are so prominent here. And they are reaching to these structures over here. These are the ovaries, and this is part of the of the um, the uterine tubes that you're going to learn about. Now we call them we call them uterine horns in the cat, uterine tubes in humans. So here is the uh, the left ovary and part of the uterine horn. They cut it out so that it was easier to see the blood vessels. We can see the left renal artery and the right renal artery and this branch up here that would be serving what they've removed is the suprarenal artery and over here we're seeing a branch of the suprarenal artery, the right suprarenal artery. This part coming out that looks like it's coming out at you is the celiac trunk. This branch going this way would be the splenic artery. This branch coming up would have gone to the stomach. It'd be sitting here, so that's the gastric artery. And this branch coming this way is the hepatic artery, which is gonna branch into all the lobes. This portion here that looks like it's been cut it would be the superior mesenteric artery. <clears throat> now we're back in the pelvic bowl again. How do I know that? I can see my little arrowhead presentation of the iliac arteries. We have the right external, left external, internal iliac, right, exter right internal iliac, and left internal iliac. 
So this is the right external iliac and left external iliac. Here's my abdominal aorta. Here's my inferior mesenteric artery. And I can see my right iliolumbar and my left iliolumbar artery with the vein right next to it. This is a very nice picture. Uh, and don't confuse this with um, your iliacs. This is actually a nice picture. And then we're not in the pelvic bowl. And I can tell you that because this over here is the spleen. And this lobe looking appearance over here is the liver. So here's your abdominal aorta. And this is the celiac trunk. That's what the blue part masked out was trying to hide from you. So this green line is the celiac trunk. This branch going over to the spleen over here is the splenic artery. This branch coming up to this organ is the, that's the stomach. So that's the gastric. And this one coming over here to this material is the hepatic. So this is the liver over here. And then this branch coming off is the superior mesenteric artery. And then as we keep going down, we would continue on with the abdominal aorta. <clears throat> so here again is our abdominal aorta. This would be where the diaphragm is. Here's our celiac trunk, the first branch off. And we can see the way they've pulled the viscera over. We can see the gastric artery. And if you look carefully, you can see a branch going this way and a branch going that way. And that would be the hepatic or splenic arteries. And I would not tag those because you can't see where they're going. I probably wouldn't even tag this picture for the gastric artery because you can't see where it's going. But I can tag the celiac trunk because you do have other landmarks. You've got the aorta here. We've got the superior mesenteric artery right here. And then down here, we can see the right renal artery branching off. This is kind of an anomaly, but this artery here is the left renal artery. We can see the renal vein, which we covered in another video, but it's very good to see this left gonadal vein dumping into it, which it should. As we move more inferiorly down the abdominal aorta, we can start to see the gonadal arteries branching off. Um, so it actually is hard to see. It branches off and it's worming its way out over here. This is probably a male and that artery is going down through the peritoneum. The right gonadal artery, I can see it branching out over there. And then this next branch is the inferior mesenteric artery. Okay, well, um, that concludes our video, and I, I hope that you are able to study from it.
Thank you.